Good morning. It's Sunday, March 21st. And the other day in Alaska at the Captain Cook Hotel, China and the United States sat down to have a diplomatic meeting. And we were represented by Secretary of State Blinken and the Chinese had had their counterparts at the table. Now, the Biden administration wants to maintain a tough line on China particularly on areas that are sensitive to China, such as human rights and building islands in the South China Seas. But China took an aggressive stance. China signaled that it is not intimidated by the U.S. or swayed by American claims to global leadership. Now, nobody expected the meeting to go in that direction so quickly, perhaps. And nobody really expected that there would be any substantive dialogue for the meetings. So they fell apart pretty quickly. So based upon the combative start to the meeting, it's difficult to believe that there will be any progress of the two nations on things like trade, because overall trade is very important to both of these countries. And right now, it looks like there is little scope for an improvement in the U.S.-China relations, at least in the near term. So after Blinken gave a description of the deep concerns about some of Beijing's human rights records, and its aggressive behavior overseas, Chinese officials just ignored whatever protocol exists at these meetings, and I am not qualified to uh, talk about what protocols exist. But the Chinese blasted the U.S. on the state of our democracy and our record on social justice. And think about what's going on with our anti- Asian discrimination in this country, and eight Asian women being killed recently, plus other attacks on Asians around the country. So you think the Chinese don't know anything about that? That's world-class news, and they know it, and they're using that to put a dagger in the heart of the U.S. at these meetings. So I don't know if we're going to get anywhere with China easily because they want to be number one in the world and they make no bones about that. And their country is buttoned up because of their leadership. They're not suffering from the division that exists in our country because they clamp down on those things. Now, I am not saying that we need to have a totalitarian state. We need to clean our democracy up so that we can really compete with China in the future. They will do what's best for China no matter what. And we foolishly have contributed to their greatness by farming out all of our essential businesses and allowing them to have the upper hand in things like the pharmaceutical industry, in things like chip manufacturing. So it'll be very difficult negotiating with these people going forward. I don't care what stance you take. Certainly, I don't think we have to take a pussycat stance. We have to be tough, but we have to recognize the enemy. I don't want to call him really an enemy. The adversary that we're facing. So China told the U.S. in no uncertain terms that it was none of their business to meddle in the internal affairs of China. And China said also some other things that indicate that it's not going to follow the rules. They proved that they were not intimidated by us. So Blinken told the Chinese about the concerns America had on economics, on trade, on technology. He told them that Congress would hear what we wanted to do, and our allies and our partners will hear what we want to do. And we, the United States and our partners, will move forward in a way that fully protects and advances our interests 
and our workers and our businesses. So that's, so that's the multifaceted message that we sent to China. But I don't think China was really listening to that message because they have a strong international position right now, and they are determined to become number one. So this is going to be a long, tough fight, and it's going to be a fight on many fronts, not just on what I'll call the tariff front and the business front. This is on the philosophy of each nation. And quite honestly, if you recognize what happened at this meeting, you know that the whole world knows that the United States is falling apart. And if this doesn't wake up our government officials, our senators and our congressmen and our diplomats, that the picture that we present to the world is not a good one, where this nation is like no other nation in the world. We have a conglomeration of people living here. We are not a one-dimensional country with one outstanding piece of the population. We are diverse, but we are so divided and so screwed up that countries like China are prepared to take advantage of our dysfunction. And who can blame them? Who can blame them? They have a billion people. And in their space, in their short space of time, maybe 50 years, they have virtually eliminated poverty from their country. During the pandemic, they did amazing things, things that we haven't even attempted to do. And they put up a 20 or 30 or 50 story building in a short amount of time. And it takes us months to do anything. Our infrastructure is falling apart and theirs is not. So we have lessons to be learned. We have to understand that working together is the only way that we are going to get out of this mess. And if China's recognition of our failures doesn't wake us up, we are going to pay the big price. We might slip to number two or three or four in the world. And I don't know how many people in this country could live with that. Now, before I go, I want to leave you with this question. How many of you believe that any of our senators or congressmen or high officials in our government really understand the implications of this meeting that took place between us and China. So having said all of that, I will leave you for now, and I'll see you in the morning. Bye.